Hi guys, here to do another review today. Uh, it's been a couple of days since my Chop Shop one, mainly for the fact that one, Great Shot hasn't arrived yet through the post, which I'm still a little bit niffed about, and uh, desperately anticipating that. And two, I've been busy doing assignment work for university, and that's eating away my life. Good old university, eh? Anyway, on to the review, as the little tightly thingy says above, I'm doing a review on Bludgeon. I finally got Bludgeon, and I'm so happy I did. We're first going to start off with uh, the classic Bludgeon shell, then move on to his little uh, transformed um, tank thingy, and then Bludgeon in all of his teeny glory. Uh, unfortunately, I did have to pay quite a lot for Bludgeon, but if anyone knows Bludgeon and how rare and difficult he is to come by, complete, because mine's complete, then you kind of understand why I'm quite happy with this guy. And since I only have two of the first wave of um, Pretenders, Skullgrin and Cloudburst, having a second, this is being my first second wave figure, I thought, oh, they're probably not going to be, he's probably not going to be that good, but I really love him. Uh, what's nice is he's not just all hard plastic which the other ones were, the arms are kind of a, a rubbery kind of plastic, well not rubbery but it's it's less hard plastic than uh, than the main body and the head. Uh, so is the helmet as well which is quite nice because it gives a bit of, you know, it gives it a bit of leeway I suppose. Uh, there are a few problems with mine like the paint's been, little bits of paint have been knocked off like uh, on the back there but apart from that it's all good. Um, a very nice figure. I, I always like uh, kind of skull things and uh, this guy with the skull and the classic kind of samurai style is very good. One gripes I do have about Bludgeon though is he didn't come with a sword. Now why Hasbro thought okay we're gonna make a samurai pretender shell and they thought we'll just give him a gun and of course uh, well, I'll, I'll show you what he's like when he's completely suited up if bludgeon was inside that's how you would display him with this big uh, tank thing stuck onto his arm as well for extra firepower which is fair enough but why Hasbro didn't think samurai sword you know mesh together they didn't do that so I had to find myself a little sword um, it was from a little shitty Gundam model I had many years ago and I'd painted because it was originally uh, that kind of crappy blue colour and I just grabbed a paint that I'd had lying around and just went plop and you know obviously it's quite a small handle but it does balance and it does look quite nice you know this green gone with that green and it kind of fits in with the colour scheme sort of uh, so that's how I've compensated. I'm sure I could get a, a proper sword. That's really my only um, complaint. Obviously, with movement-wise, what can you expect? You're supposed to fit a little robot inside this body, so the legs aren't going to move, but the arms do turn all the way around. I'm not going to show you, because you should know what a, an arm turning all the way around looks like. By now, anyway. Um, his gun is quite nice. Uh, I, I don't remember him ever having this. But then again, all I've had for, uh, from Bludgeon was the the uh, War Within comics and um, the IDW ones, and that's it. Uh, so this gun, whatever, it's it's a gun. I suppose it works. It fits in his hand quite nicely, and it means he's 100% complete. Uh, so we'll move on to the detail part of the video, and then on to uh, Bludgeon in his tank mode, then Bludgeon in his robot mode. So I'll see you for the detail part coming up next. Okay, so now we're going to look at uh, Bludgeon's Pretender Shell uh, in, in a lot more detail. Uh, very nice, the obvious bra maroon brown colour, the white skull, the, the colours that we all know and love Bludgeon's Shell for. Uh, I'll take his helmet off first because he is a Pretender, so his, helm his helmet can come off. We'll just have a quick look at it. I see this as quite a He-Man styled head, well helmet anyway, but it is, you know, samurai style. I don't know why I say He-Man, but it, it does remind me of He-Man. As you can see, uh, I'm squeezing it, so it is rubbery, it's not the solid plastic. A uh, nice little diamond detail on the side there, big antenna, and little indentations along there, and 
as you can see on there as well. Uh, not a lot of detail elsewhere, but it does make the head look a lot, a lot better, I think. I, I prefer it when it's on, but we'll finish with that bit, so we'll get rid of that. I'll go into this bit uh, in his tank mode, so we'll look at his gun finally, and then we'll move on to this guy. This gun has a, a lot of detail on it. A lot of detail that makes it stand out and it looks really nice and well obviously detailed I'm using that word a hell of a lot at the moment uh, but yeah everything about it makes it look interesting and makes it stand out from just being a bland gun so we'll get rid of that now finally on to bludgeon the important part obviously he's a skeleton face uh, with all of its teeth and awesome detail and features. I'll try and block out the light because it's being awkward as hell at the moment. Uh, little cracks as well which is quite nice along the skull. We're just looking at the skull at the moment. Uh, why this dude has cracks in his skull I don't know. It's nice detail they've, they've thought of though. Uh, and random neck muscles as well but you know I, I don't see them putting bones in there to give him a decent head. It, it wouldn't work too well. Uh, Obviously, bludgeon is supposed to be some kind of, I'm assuming, a cybernetic samurai. So like I was saying, he's a, a cybernetic kind of samurai thing. And uh, this is obvious to me anyway, because he's got this very robotic and smooth chest plate, uh, chest plate with these kind of vents underneath them. Uh, Inside that gap there in his chest, he does have a couple of little lines, but it's not a great amount of detail. And he does have this nice um, samurai style waist belt armor, which again is very nicely detailed. Uh, the legs, they've just got a few lines on and kneecap joints. Well, kneecap pads, which would, you know, you'd assume it being joints if he could move. Uh, the arms nicely detailed with these little lines and dents in them and nice big shoulder pads as well uh, the big square bit kinda takes away his, his sleekness but that's obviously just so you can uh, squeeze in the, the good good old little bludgeon into the side there turn it round and you know less detail but what are you gonna do he still looks a hell of a lot nicer than the, the uh, original pretenders where as he had them like this they had this giant square bit come sorry this giant square bit coming out of their their entire back with bludgeon it's just a little sliver so all in all bludgeon with his helmet on there we go looks a lot better there is awesome the shell is the best pretender shell I've seen so far uh, so I guess we'll move on to the tank mode now so I guess I'll see you for that. And now we're back uh, with the uh, bludgeon in his tank mode. Now, he is quite small, but let's be fair. Like I said, you need to get this into that into that shell. It's going to be quite hard uh, to, to squash it down. But I think it's quite a cute little tank, to be honest. It kind of reminds me of, if anyone knows what uh, Generation 2 Megatron looks like, the big tank with the Megatron attacks. Uh, little sound effects. Um, what he well, what mine came with was a little watch that kind of looked very similar to this, and the little bit came out, and it had the time. Uh, so you know, it's a nice little nostalgia bit for me personally. Uh, there is quite a lot of nice detail, especially on the top here, and even when you pop off this bit, even on there, there's quite a lot of little nice detail of they've got on. Uh, he's got no proper treads and you know from the bottom you can tell he's a robot but if you've had any micromasters or whatever you know they're sort of the same faults uh, it, it, he is bigger than a micromaster though um, I'm gonna take a, a quick guess and say that would be the size of a micromaster uh, and this is you know if, if he was transformed now but he does get a little bit more height when you pull out his legs to transform him so you know they are slightly bigger than than they are. Uh, you can twist around the the gun, turn it all the way around, of course, because it's oh, can you not? No, you can't. No, I lie. 
the little tips of his feet there don't allow you to turn it all the way around so if you want the cannon to face backwards you're going to have to pull it off and do that with it. But you know, it, it's good that you do get quite nice motion in because you know, that, that, no, that's uh, as far as it goes before it gets stuck. So you know, you, you can shoot some Autobots if you like. Uh, we're going to move on to the detail part of uh, the tank mode and then finally on to Bludgeon himself. So I'll see you then.